Good morning. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. We're glad to have each and every one of you on this cool and damp Sunday morning. But it's a great morning to serve the Lord and to lift up the name of Jesus Christ. That name is above all names. That his name every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. We gather here today as God's wonderful people. We gather together to lift up one another, to pray for one another, to reach out to one another, to help one another, to make that difference in one another's lives. We gather here as God's wonderful people to make a difference in the world around about us. We gather to be the light in the midst of the darkness, We gather to give hope in time of despair. We gather to worship the Lord. Hymn number 145, Morning Has Broken. This morning, as we go to the Lord in prayer, we want to remember all those that are sick, those that are shut in. We ask the Lord to continue to be with each and every one of those. Uh, We ask the Lord to be with those of you that know Roy Christie. His wife died. uh, And so we ask the Lord to be with Roy and to touch him in a mighty way. I understand someone was killed on Dial's Church Road this morning, and also there was another one in Lawrence County last night. And so we ask the Lord to be uh, with those families and hold them close. We think about that family at Pelzer with that little 12-year-old boy, and uh, we just, we have situations all around us that need Prayer, and we just ask the Lord to be in the midst of each and every situation. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, as we come before your throne of grace this morning, Heavenly Father, we thank you for all that you continue to do for each and every one of us. For Lord, you have been so good to us. You have blessed us in so many different ways. 
Lord, thank you for caring about each and every one of us. Heavenly Father, thank you for your concern that you have, that you're willing to lead the flock, that you're willing to go wherever it takes to find that one that is lost, that you might return it to the fold. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your mercy and for your grace that makes it all possible for us to have life, to have it so abundantly and to have that assurance of eternal life. Heavenly Father, thank you for such mercy and such grace Heavenly Father, we thank you for your Son, Jesus Christ, who came from the portals of glory to offer up himself for each and every one of us that our sins might be forgiven, that we might have that life and that we might have it eternal and that we might have hope for each day knowing that we're not alone knowing that your Son, Jesus Christ, has sent the precious Holy Spirit to be with each and every one of us, to walk with us day by day, to give us a word of encouragement, to give us direction in our lives, to guide us, to direct us, to make that difference in the lives of people around us, that we might make that difference in the world. Heavenly Father, we pray for all those that are in need of your touch this day. Heavenly Father, for all those families that are bereaved, Lord, we ask for you to be with them this morning in a mighty way. Lift them up. Hold them close. Bless them mightily. And Heavenly Father, these precious children of yours that have gathered here together today as a family, Heavenly Father, watch over each and every one of them. Heavenly Father, bless them, be with them, walk with them, encircle each and every one of them. Heavenly Father, meet each and every one of their needs. Lord, we thank you for each and every one of them. Thank you for the privilege to serve them, to be a part of their lives. Heavenly Father, go with us now throughout this service. May your spirit move within each and every one of our hearts. And we thank you for the prayer that Jesus prayed on many occasions. And we pray this morning as your children, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Hymn number 526, What a We Have in Jesus.
Our Psalter reading is found on page 754 as we read from the 23rd Psalm. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. The Lord makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters and he restores my life. He leads me in right paths for the sake of the Lord's name. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I fear no evil. For you are with me, your rod and your staff, they may comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. If you did not uh, get your blueberries last week, uh, you're welcome to get them this week. I picked a gallon off of one bush, so there's plenty of berries there. And so I'd love for you to come and help yourself. Uh, also in the back is some squash and cucumbers. I told Walt, I said, I don't believe I'll ever plant 140 squash plants again. <laughs> it's not so much planting them as having to gather them. <laughs> but when everybody else is dying, the Lord has blessed these and continue to bless. So there's squash and cucumbers in the back. Uh, you're welcome to them. Uh, we're glad to share them with you. Uh, Last Sunday, we begin our eighth year with you on the second time around. So this is our 21st year together. And so I appreciate the opportunity to serve you and to be a part of the family, to be able to minister with you and to laugh with you and to enjoy life together. And so... I appreciate the privilege to be able to serve you as we have been now your pastor. This is the 21st year. Heavenly Father, you have been so good to us. You have blessed us so abundantly. Heavenly Father, we thank you for each and every one of these precious children. Thank you for the privilege to serve them and to be a part of each and every one of their lives. Heavenly Father, we ask now that you might bless the gifts that have been given. Heavenly Father, that those gifts might be used to make a difference in the lives of those around about us. Heavenly Father, bless those gifts in a mighty way and bless the givers, those that give every week, every month. Lord, bless them a hundredfold. We ask it all in Jesus' name. Amen. Would you stand for the doxology?
1986, when we moved from Mullins to Oak Hill and Pisgah over about Pelzer, uh, when we came for our introductory visit, when we came through Greenwood and came on up 25, we thought we were moving on to higher ground. Uh, and we planted our feet on higher ground and we never have left this higher ground. We stayed, uh, went to Piedmont and then came here. So we kind of like the higher ground. But we're looking up forward to that day when we'll be on the highest ground of all. We'll be with our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Our scripture this morning is found in the Gospel of Luke, the 10th chapter, beginning with verse 25. A familiar story you heard many times. And behold, a certain lawyer stood up and tempted him, saying, Master, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? And he said unto him, What is written in the law? And how readest thou? And he answered and said, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy strength and with all thy mind and thy neighbor as thyself. And he said unto him, Thou hast answered right, this do, and thou shalt live. But he's willing to justify himself, said unto Jesus, And who is my neighbor? And Jesus answered and said, A certain man went down from Jerusalem to Jericho, and he fell among the thieves which stripped him of his raiment, and wounded him and departed, leaving him half dead. And by chance there came down a certain priest that way, and when he saw him, he passed on the other side. And likewise a Levite, when he was at the place, came and looked on him and passed by on the other side. But then a certain Samaritan, as he journeyed, came where he was, and when he saw him, he had compassion on him. And he went to him, bound up his wounds, poured in oil and wine, and set him on his own beast, and brought him to an inn. And he took care of him. And on tomorrow, when he departed, he took out two pence and gave them to the host, and said unto him, Take care of him. And whatsoever thou spendest more, when I come again, I will repay thee. Now, which of these three thinkest thou was neighbor unto him that fell among the thieves? And he said, He that showed mercy on him. Then said Jesus unto him, Go and do likewise. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we truly thank you for this scripture and the message that you have given unto me this day as I break the bread of life to your precious children. May every word that flow from my lips be pleasing unto you. And Heavenly Father, these your precious children who have come today to hear the bread of life. Heavenly Father, may their hearts and meditation thereof be pleasing unto you. Heavenly Father, anoint every word that is spoken and every word that is received. Lord, we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Our subject today is a good neighbor. The question is asked, who is thy neighbor? A young lawyer came to Jesus and said, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Well, 
it was the wrong question to ask because we cannot inherit eternal life. Eternal life comes only through Jesus Christ and his shed blood on Calvary's cross. It's all about what Jesus Christ did for us. It's not about ourselves, for we will never be good enough. We will never be able to pay our way. We'll never be able to buy the gift of salvation. It was given to us by Jesus Christ and his shed blood on Calvary's cross. We have all sinned and come short of the glory of God. And when we confess our sins, then God is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. It is through him that we receive that precious gift of eternal life. The young lawyer said, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Simply to accept Jesus Christ as the Son of God and to believe that he rose the third day and ask the Lord to forgive us of our sin, then we shall have eternal life. Jesus, as he speaks to the young lawyer, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Jesus says, well, what does the law say? How do you read the law? Jesus is the law. And he asked the young lawyer, how do you read it? And he says, well, to love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and all thy soul and all thy mind and all thy strength and thy neighbor as thyself. This young lawyer put together two Old Testament scriptures. To love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and all thy soul, and all thy strength, and all thy mind, and to love thy neighbor as thyself. And Jesus says, you have spoken right. Do this and you shall live. But the young lawyer wanted to justify himself. And so he asked, who is thy neighbor? But folks, we cannot justify ourselves. For the only way we can be justified is through the shed blood of Jesus Christ that was given to us on Calvary's cross. When Jesus' blood was shed, He atoned for all our sin. And it's then and only then that God looked down upon us and said, You are justified. Because I see no sin, not because of what we did, but because of the shed blood of Jesus Christ that cleansed our sins and wiped away our sins, that God could look down upon us and see no sin and say, you are justified. But the young lawyer wanted to justify himself. And so he said, who is thy neighbor? And so Jesus tells the story of a certain Jew that left Jerusalem and was making his way down to Jericho, which is dangerous territory. There's a lot of different places along the road 
from Jerusalem to Jericho where robbers could hang out. And, and on this occasion, when this person came from Jerusalem down to Jericho, he was robbed and he was beaten. He was laid by the side of the road half dead. And then all of a sudden, a priest came down. And the priest, rather than noticing him, he just walked on the other side of the road. He didn't have time for the man in the ditch, the man in trouble, the man that needed need, was in need. How often are we like that priest that we are in such a hurry that we don't have time to even take a glance at what's going on around about us to make that difference in the life of that person. So often we don't even know who our neighbor is. And then the Levite came down and he came by, and at least he did walk over and look at him. But he knew the law, and he knew that if he touched a dead person, he would be unclean. And he was in a hurry. He probably had some kind of appointment in, in, Jer in Jericho, and so he didn't have time to, to do anything with the man. And so he hurried on down to Jericho. You know, a lot of times we look at a situation. We know that there needs to be something done. We know that that person is in need. But we just simply do like the Levite. I just got too much on the plate. I just got too much to do. I just don't have time to help that person. And so we too head on down to Jericho. But now here comes a Samaritan who is hated by the Jews. The Jews, they worship in Jerusalem, but the Samaritans, they worship on the mountain. They have different religious beliefs. And yet, this Samaritan finds time to stop, sees the need, and he shows compassion. He bandages him up, he cleans him up, he pours in the oil and the wine, and he places him on his beast and he makes it down to Jericho and there he puts him up for the night and he stays with him. The next morning he says to the innkeeper, I'm going to leave this money with you if it's not enough, but I want you to look after him. I want you to take care of him. When I return, I'll pay you what else. I owe you. You see, here was one that was hated by the Jews, and here was a fellow Jew in the ditch. But he took time to make that difference. He took time to help somebody in need. And folks, that's what the Lord is calling us to do today. To be a good neighbor. To everybody, to whoever is in need, reach out and make that difference. Yesterday, as I was getting ready to take the trash to the dumpster, something said, well, why don't you take some squash and cucumbers to the man that runs the, the station? I see him every week, but I don't know his name. I speak to him, and he speaks back. But I put a 10 or 12 squash in a bag and four or five cucumbers, and I put my trash in the back, and I went to the 
dumpster and I throw the three tra bags of trash in. I took the bag of squash and cucumbers and I went over and said, I just want to share it with you. And, and he looked up at me and he said, thank you, thank you, thank you. Folks, we never know who we don't touch, whose life we don't change as we reach out in the love of Christ to show compassion, to meet the needs of people everywhere. Somebody said, well, why do you give every family in the church a gallon of blueberries? Don't you know that's money? No. God has been so good. And God continues to bless in so many ways. Folks, you can't outdo the Lord. You can't outgive the Lord. You can't outdo the Lord. The more you do, the more he's on bless. Folks, the Lord is calling us to be that good neighbor, to be a good neighbor to everyone. Used to, when I was growing up in the little town of Wagner, I, we knew everybody. There wasn't anybody that we didn't know. Everybody in town knew everybody. But today we don't even know who lives next door to us. We live in a different world. But as we live in this different world, God gives us opportunities to make a difference. And so, folks, take advantage of those opportunities. Make that difference as you become a good neighbor to somebody in need. Lord, I want to be a Christian. Lord, I want to be more like Jesus. Lord, I want to make a difference. Folks, the Holy Spirit will give you that opportunity to make a difference in the lives of those around about you. Hymn number 402, as we sing the first and last verse, Lord, I want to be a Christian in my heart. Help us to be Christians in our heart. Heavenly Father, help us to be more like Jesus. Help us to have compassion for a dying world. Help us to be the light in the midst of the darkness, to be that love in time of despair and hatred. Give us that word of hope as we reach out to the world around about us. Heavenly Father, help us to be all that you would have us to be. We ask it in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. 
Amen.